Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, guys, we're going to cover the company that was brought up by, once again, the wonderful KLL, and she recommended the company TOST, which is the company Toast, that, and that's actually spelled like Toast, like T-O-A-S-T. So very, very interesting company. Let's take a look at what they do. Let's also take a look at their fundamentals and see if at the current share price, this is looking like a buy. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So coming into now what they do, we got over here, Toast Inc. operates a cloud-based digital technology platform for the restaurant industry in the United States and Ireland. Very, very interesting. I was not expecting that to be Honestly, I wasn't expecting that to, to have demand. Like, I really didn't. So that's very, very interesting right in there. The company offers Toast POS, uh, a software module that integrates payment processing with point-of-sale functionality. Toast invoicing that allows restaurants to send invoices and collect payment. Toast mobile order and pay, which allows guests to scan a QR code to browse the menu, order, and pay from mobile. Kitchen display system software that connects the house with the kitchen staff. And multi-location management, a tool to manage operations and configure menus across multiple locations and channels. Again, very, very interesting. I was not aware that this was in demand. I, I really, really wasn't. In fact, they're in they're in the tech sector believe it or not so that's again very very interesting to see now their earnings was on february 16th their eps normalized actual came in at negative 18 cents missed by 11 cents eps gap actual 19 cents missed by one penny revenue actual came in at 769 million dollars which was beat by 15.87 million dollars now i would go into their actual earnings report however well i think all of you guys are going to get the idea of what this company is looking like based off of just their fundamentals and actually we're getting that right here right now in the form of their pe nonetheless though we got the ticker symbol for tost market cap of 1.3 billion dollars in a pe of na no this is not a mistake with the calculator in fact if i were to do something like this well you would see that the pe is actually working no this is a case of the fact that well their net income is uh, in the negatives so that's a problem. And they're actually consistently in the negative. Wait until I show you guys exactly what I mean. Now, they currently have a share price of $17.33, which in the one year, they're down 11.63. Year to date, they're down 1.25. And the 52-week range, it is $11.91 to $26.04. Very, very interesting. Not 52-week lows, but getting in that general direction. Now, they do not pay out a dividend, which means that all of their free cash is going straight to themselves. However, take a look at this five-year average and last year's free cash flow, guys. Negative 128 million and negative 172. So not only is their last year's free cash flow lower than the average, they're both in the negative. So that's already a major red flag for me. So yeah, this is pretty much why I'm like, <laughs> I don't really need to take a look at their earnings report because I mean, come on, this is just looking very, very bad. So let's actually see how bad this is This is going. We got starting, of course, with the net income five years ago of $209 million to one year ago of $275 million. By the way, all that I just said there is negative. So you can see right here when it comes to this, this is a drop of 32%. So not only are they in the negatives, guys, they are continuing to go negative. Now, the worst year was three years ago, COVID related, sure. But you can see negative 209, negative 248, negative 275 consistently decreasing even if you remove this three year ago value so for this reason i'm going to give this a five percent looking at the free cash flow we see the exact same thing however in the three year ago it's actually slightly in the well it's not slightly in the positive it's still in the negative but it's slightly better than all the rest of the years nonetheless though it's still consistently decreasing going from negative 135 million to negative 172 million decrease of 27 percent with an average of as we saw negative 128.4 million dollars again the one thing to note here is that three years ago because of covid they did negative 10 million dollars so they did a little bit of a spike but still in the overall negatives and you can see negative 135 negative 153 and negative 172 consistently decreasing i'm going to give this a 10 percent looking now at the revenue this one well you know if a company isn't having positive revenues then they're going under right obviously so 
the revenue is increasing going from 665 million to 2.7 billion that is a massive increase going up 310.68 percent you can see that the main spike was three years ago and from three to two years ago pretty much going well pretty much going up by a billion dollars from three years ago to two years ago now it's in the positive sure but i'm not going to give it a really good grade because of that massive spike so i'm going to give this up 55 percent looking at the total assets minus total liabilities this one is you know at least we have the five years being in the positive however well you can see a massive spike from four to three years ago going from 378 million to 1.1 billion dollars and then two years ago they went up slightly again to one well okay to be specific three years ago 1.091 billion dollars two years ago 1.098 billion dollars now the one year ago and the today is the exact same thing as the two year because they don't have this numbers unfortunately they do not go back too far so just so that way we can see all the numbers how they stand out this is essentially what i'm having it this way nonetheless though that's still a massive spike going from four to three years ago average total assets it is 1.56 billion dollars average liabilities it is 606.2 million dollars doing the difference we get 952.6 million dollars i'm gonna give this guys a 40 percent because again massive massive spike I do not like to see that at all. In fact, looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities, we saw their cash flow consistently decreasing. So this is not surprising to see this thing continuously decreasing. Even the year where their free cash flow was not in the positive, just slightly less than the negative, still continue to go down. You can see negative 324, negative 555, negative 551, negative 654, negative 835. So that's really, really bad. As of one year ago slash two years ago, they're lower than the average of negative $640 million. I have to give this a 0%. Like not a single year did they go up slightly. So again, I'm giving this a 0%. Looking at the shares outstanding, this is looking identical essentially to the assets minus the liabilities a massive spike from four to three years ago overall in the five year it is 194.8 million shares to 522.8 million shares that's an increase in the five year guys of 168.38 percent massive massive spike again three years ago probably covid related nonetheless though it still occurred and even from that from three to two years ago they increased it slightly once again so this is all over the place now because of the fact that they increased it slightly right from three to two years ago they increased it slightly i'm not going to give it too much i don't even know because the problem is is that one year ago value and the today value and even you know the, the, the two year ago value i'm basing the one year ago and the today value off of the two year because we don't have the data we really don't so I'm going to give this a 40%, but reluctant 40%. It should be a lot lower in my personal opinion. I have around maybe like a 25%. And lastly, looking at the cash and coins, they currently hold $547 million with an average of $530.4 million. Now, looking at the overall grades, guys, we gave them an income of 5%, free cash flow 10%, revenue 55%, assets minus liabilities 40%, cash flow minus liabilities 0%, shares of standing of 0%, overall grade of 25%. Yeah, I mean, they just they don't make money they don't they don't have any net income and it's consistently decreasing further and further into the negative so is their free cash flow the only positive one is the revenue so and that's not really surprising if a company's selling something obviously they're going to have positive revenue but aside from that guys free cash flow remember it is everything and it is consistently decreasing so 25 percent that is a that's a really low grade not gonna lie so now let's come into the calculator because well unfortunately <laughs> This is not going to look good, right? The current share price is $17.33. Without inputting anything, you can see that not adjusting for debt is $1.68. And then adjusting for debt, I'll give them that. Their net debt in relationship to the cash on hand it is pretty minuscule. So this actually brings the value up $4.40. Now, here's the thing when it comes to this. Looking at Seeking Alpha, we can see that the forward revenue is estimated at 39.15% however that is a little bit too high way too high in my personal opinion so i'm gonna go something along the lines of like three four and five percent and in regards to the predictor share buyback i personally do not know they might continue to issue shares i'm i don't know i just don't know if they're going to continue to issue shares because they've done one massive increase right but then after that they've only ever done small dilutions still a dilution though so i'm going to have to give this the fact that they're going to maybe issue shares at like five percent 
if, for the lowest assumption. Let's say negative four for the median assumption, and let's say negative three for the highest assumption. The negative just means that they are going to issue shares. So obviously, because the negative, you know, the further negative you go, that means that the further more they're going to increase, five, four, and three percent. That's the way that I'm gonna look at this. Now, this means that for a target share price with a required rate of return of 10%, not just for debt, we get a dollar and seventy-seven to a dollar ninety-four. And adjusting for debt. This comes up to $4.55 to $4.90. With a margin of safety of 5, 10, 50%, this is $3.86 to $4.65. So here comes the whole thing of like, you don't know growth, you don't understand this, you don't understand that. Well, guys, you know, at the end of the day, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow and is not financial advice. I am not telling you that the share price is going to fall here. This is essentially what the company's value should be, what the value of the company is 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 based off of their future projected free cash flow, which it is consistently decreasing, and the future projected shares outstanding, which it is consistently increasing. Unfortunately, you want that to be inverted, and it is not. So it is what it is. These are essentially what I think the company should be worth. If you guys do not believe in it, that is perfectly fine. You know, at the end of the day, you guys should make your own decisions because this is not financial advice. So please... Have these calculators are available for free. If you believe that the revenue is actually going to increase at that 39%, let's just say over here for the highest assumption that you say 40%, you know, and you believe that they're going to buy back shares at like, let's say like 3%. Well, guys, take a look at that. Now the target share price, not adjusting for, or I'm sorry, adjusting for debt, it is $13.08. A lot closer to the $17 mark. I just don't personally believe that this type of company will grow at 40% in the next upcoming four years. So yeah, that's why I'm giving this a lot lower grade in the sense of just like 5% revenue growth. So on top of that, remember that even, even if they were to grow at 40% when it comes to the revenue, guys, their free cash will still in the gutter. So please be very, very weary when it comes to this. Again, this is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. This is why I have all of these calculators available for free for you guys to make your own assumptions. I will also link the earnings report for this company as well in the description below if you guys would like to read it. I know I didn't cover it, but if you guys still would like to read it, it'll be the first link in the description below. So please have all these calculators, read the earnings report, read your 10Ks, and make your own decision for yourself because, you know, I'm not here to tell you guys what to buy, where to put your money, any of that stuff. Just you make that decision for yourselves. All we're asking for in return for daily content, sometimes the occasional live stream, which we will have on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard for CPI, as well as covering this SVB collapse and possibly even now the Fed, the Fed meeting on Monday. And apparently, as if I'm recording this, markets are up like 2%, like 1.5 to 2%. Absolutely crazy. Just because of this whole nonsense that's been happening. We will have a live stream uh, Mikhail Krasnowski and I will have a live stream to see like what's going to happen here, like analyzing how CPI went, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you guys would like to stop by again, the best way that anybody can support us is just doing that. Like, subscribe, comment really does help here. You can also, uh, spread the word of our channel. If you guys think we're doing a good job, you know, t tell your friends that is the best way to grow, honestly. So again, thank you for everybody who ha who has done that. Uh, KLL, I know you're like, top tier when it comes to that so is tony and a few other people but that would be awesome if we could just keep growing we're almost up to 2200 subscribers as if i'm recording this it is at 2191 or 92 one of those two so maybe by monday on the 13th we might reach 2200 that's absolutely insane and uh, never thought that that would happen every subscriber that we get every comment every like every every support that we get here on on per video is just one step closer to hopefully making this like a full-fledged business we'll have the ability to make to, to to buy like a studio and then like we'll do like face cam like real real like face cam like you know kind of a podcast for economics i think that'd be great i think that's a great uh goal to strive so you know thank you so much for everybody who have done that and again the best way that all of you guys can help is just like subscribe comment and of course tell your friends about us now, coming over here to the options chains, to my surprise, there's a lot of liquidity for this. I was not expecting that. Take a look at this. March 17th, March 24th, March 31st, pretty much every single week we have expiration dates. And on top of that, looking at the March 17th one, there's a lot of volume over here, like a lot. 
looking at some of these strike prices on the put side, well, you are going to get some, you're actually not going to get some pretty good premium here for a strike of $17. You, you will get $40 if we were to sell this put here, and even $25 bucks for the $16.50 strike. Looking at the calls, pretty much the exact same thing for a strike of $17.50. You would essentially get 50 bucks in premium, and for a strike of 18, you would get 30. Looking at the March 24th one, this is probably a lot bigger. Yep, for a strike of 17, you will get 60. And for a strike of $17.50, for the call side, you would get 75. So, you know, it really just depends. In my personal opinion, if you do have 100 shares of this company, I personally do not like the fundamentals. I would definitely try to get rid of this using, you know, options calls. Um, just try to sell calls on this company at a much higher strike that you currently have. And if you get it away, then not only do you get the profit of just selling it at a higher price, but you also get a premium. And in my personal opinion, getting rid of a company with negative cash flow, negative net income, to me is a plus. But then again, that's just me. That's what I would do. So as it currently stands, when it comes to options, this is actually, to my surprise, there's a lot of liquidity here. So yeah, take that as an advantage if you so wish to do so. All in all, when it comes to Toast, thank you so much for the recommendation. I love getting companies I've never heard of before and uh, you know demands that I've never thought existed which again is very, very surprising. So again, thank you so much KLL for this recommendation. And that will pretty much do it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out with the algorithm on YouTube. As I said, you guys can follow us on the new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. We'll see you all in the next stock analysis video and the live stream. Please, we'll be live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. We're going to be covering CPI as well as SVB and any other nonsense that may happen on Monday and Tuesday. So with that said, peace out.